So this is a sur surgical video of upper eyelid reconstruction with uh, post-auricular skin graft. The uh, patient is a 55-year-old female with a previous history of upper eyelid blepharoplasty. Um, unfortunately, during the procedure, the surgeon removed too much skin from both her upper eyelids, um, and this resulted in her inability to close both eyes. So when I saw her for revisional surgery, she had problems actually closing her eyes, which you can see clearly on this picture. So a decision was made to do an upper eyelid reconstruction with a post-auricular skin graft. So as you can see, the upper eyelid crease is marked. Go ahead and infiltrate lidocaine 2% with 1 in 100,000 epinephrine in that area. A shield is placed to protect the eyeball. And a 15 blade is used to make a skin incision over the pre-placed skin markings. I typically use a Colorado tip cautery to um, go through the scar tissue and release the, the scar tissue all the way down, uh, at least onto, onto the orbicularis before we get to the septum. Now a 4 silk suture is also passed through the gray line and that helps with traction and it, it stabilizes things so we can measure how much skin is going to need it for uh, anterior lamellar reconstruction. So now typically I mark, use a marking pen and caliper to kind of make sure this is the distance that we, we need. Um, for this patient, we also use a, you know, you can use a, 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 a template. Um, I use the suture template. Um, paper template to kind of take, take a drawing of it and as you see on a post auricular region we're using a marking pen and transferring that into the desired section. Once you transfer that we you need to go ahead and inject the lidocaine and with a 15 blade remove the desired skin. Typically, this is a safe region to cut, but you do have to be careful with the, um, some of the nerves that are coming out in, in that region. Cautery is achieved with the Colorado tip cautery or any, any kind of instrument you have available. And we do an interrupted buried suture to repose the subcutaneous tissue and this is a, a 5 vicro suture that I'm using. Now once several of those are placed I use a, a chromic suture. This is a 5 chromic in a running and uh, locked uh, fashion. It's passed. And you don't have to worry about removing this because it absorbs in about three weeks. And postoperatively, we put some um, bacitrase anointment. And that should be sufficient. Now, the skin graft is thin. I use a, a blunt uh, Westcott scissor to get rid of some of the fatty tissue that's around it. Remember, there is really no subcutaneous fat on the eyelid. So we go ahead and put that in the desired position. As you see, it's a great fit. And now you have several options for this. I typically use a 7 vicro to anchor these at the edges. And you can go ahead and do a running um, pass through it. Once the, the, the corners are anchored in position, you can just run the suture. A couple of things to mention here. Um, we 
typically on a post-operative case like this, I go ahead and patch the patient. I do a pressure patch over the skin graft and that helps um, things to heal well. You put a little bit of uh, maxitrol or erythromycin, any, any antibacterial ointment over it um, and patch it for one week. And when the patient comes back, um, the skin graft is healed and it's in, you're not worried about any kind of movement on that end. You see that's the ointment placed and the patch is placed with a paper tape to cover the region. Now going to the post-op photo you see before and afters on this patient. The patient can now fully close her eyelids and she has significant amount of improvement in her dry eye symptoms and exposure issues. And as you can see the skin graft is really difficult to see unless try to look at her very closely. Um, thank you.